Hi everybody, welcome back. In the previous video, we had talked about what is needed to make a buffer. And we recognize that we need a weak acid and its conjugate base. Or you can think of it as a weak base and its conjugate acid. So in this video, we will learn how to calculate the pH of a buffer solution. And I will do that by working this example here. And so our buffer consists of 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Now, when you wanna calculate the pH of a buffer, because you're working with weak acid, weak base equilibria, we need to do a rice table. And since I like to work with Ka values, it's just something that I have done all my life, <laughs> all my chemistry life, I would say, um, then I usually start with the weak acid and do the weak acid equilibria. It's not to say that you couldn't use the weak base on the left side of the arrow and do a Kb, but I will use the weak acid. Remember, we're in equilibria. And so acetic acid's my proton donor. It will lose a proton. That means water's acting as a base. It will gain a proton to make the conjugate acid of water, which is the hydronium ion. Acetic acid lost that proton to form the conjugate base acetate. And remember, sodium acetate dissociates into water, it's a soluble salt, into the sodium cation and the acetate anion. The key component in our buffer is the acetate because it's the conjugate base of acetic acid. I do not include sodium cation in there. Um, from a previous video, we talked about how it's the counter ion to sodium hydroxide, so it's pH neutral. It doesn't affect anything. And if you remember from first semester general chemistry, you would have learned precipitation reactions, and you would have seen sodium act as a spectator all the time. And so essentially here, I'm just writing the net ionic equation. All right, so continue on with our rice table. We need to write down what we initially put into our beaker. And we put in 0.1 molar acetic acid. Remember, water is not included. It's a liquid in this case here. The hydronium ion concentration is essentially zero at the start. Remember, we're ignoring um, the autoionization of water here. But acetate, we did put in 0.1 molar. And I think this is something that, that might be new to many of you. Um, up until this point, when we've been doing rice tables, usually the products are zero, right? You just put something in to start, and then we calculate the equilibrium concentrations in the end. However, with the buffer system, you will have two ingredients in your beaker here. Like whenever you ask your question, what's in my beaker? You put in acetic acid and acetate at the same time. So just please be mindful of that when you're working these problems. All right, we just continue on our rice table as we've done before. Minus one X plus one X plus one X. Make that C look a little nicer. There we go. And what we're really curious about, the concentrations at equilibrium, so we add up the initial and the change. We get 0 0.100 minus, and then minus one X would be minus X. 0 plus 1x is essentially x, and then now we have 0 0.100 plus 1x, which I'll just make that x. I like to include ones in the change because there will be reactions where the stoichiometric coefficients are not 1. So just to remind you of that. Now our goal is to calculate the pH of this buffer. Remember pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium concentration at equilibrium. So essentially our goal is to figure out x here. And the way we're gonna do that is utilize our Ka expression. Products over reactants.
plugging in the equilibrium concentrations into our equilibrium constant expression. And because we're looking at the Ka, we wrote a weak acid equilibria. We would look up the Ka value for acetic acid or it would be provided for you on an assessment. And that is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth for acetic acid here. Now I'm gonna assume that X is small enough to ignore. And in that case, X is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The trick I've taught you in a previous video is to divide by the initial concentration. It doesn't matter which one here, they're both the same, times 100%. That's equal to 0.018%. As long as that number, 0.018%, is less than 5%, then it is safe to assume that x is small enough to ignore, so we don't have to do any lengthy algebra steps here. So therefore, x is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That means that the hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium is also equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. The pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, which is equal to 4.74. So the pH of our buffer is 4.74 when we put in 0.1 molar acetic acid with 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Now, if you were to calculate the pH of acetic acid in pure water, and this is a good exercise for you all to do on your own, and what I mean by pure water, I mean not adding any sodium acetate at the beginning, where this number is zero, right? So if you put 0.1 molar into your beaker and nothing else, then the pH of your solution would be 2.87. So the pH of acetic acid In pure water is equal to 2.87. So we see a significant difference. And does this make sense to you? Well, think about it. You know, initially in a buffer, we had both a weak acid and a weak base together. So we're adding base in here. You should expect the pH to be higher than it would be if we had added no base at all. <clears throat> but there's another reason as to why the ionization of acetic acid is suppressed in this buffer system than compared to just a pure aqueous solution. And it's based on Le Chatelier's principle and the common ion effect. The common ion that we added to create our buffer was the acetate, right? The acetate is actually part of acetic acid's weak acid equilibria, right? And by adding in, and I'll write this in red, by adding in the acetate, right, we've increased the concentration of the products. The equilibrium shifts to the left. And so that means that less of the acetic acid is able to dissociate, is able to ionize due to this common ion effect. So we added a common ion, it suppressed the equilibrium, it shifted it to the left based on Le Chatelier's principle, and therefore prevented our reactant, in this case acetic acid, from ionizing or going forward. And that's why the pH of the buffer system is higher than the pH if it was just in pure water alone. All right, so that's how you calculate the pH of a buffer system. Um, you can go ahead and you know practice using your rice tables to do that. You've worked with rice tables before um, in my class, um, and so now you can use it for solving for the pH of a buffer system. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.